Okay, are we ready to get started? Yeah, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so um, I will welcome everyone to tonight's village board meeting for April 27th, 2020. And we are holding our second meeting via Zoom. And it's uh, because we are able to do this because of the Governor Cuomo's order, Executive Order 202.1 that allows us to hold this remotely. I'll call to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Attorney Greco. Or unmute myself. <laughs> I pledge allegiance okay. to the flag we'll of the United States of America. The flag 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 of the United States of Administrator Kindren, would you do the roll call, please? Yes. Mayor Rogers? Here. Deputy Mayor Piazza? Here. Trustee E2? Did you hear Here. me? Yes. Yes. Trustee Yates? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Attorney Greco? Here. Deputy Treasurer Pasco? Here. General Crew Chief Villanen? Here. Here. Director of Community Development, DePriest. Here. Okay, everybody's here. Here. Great, thank you. Uh, so we have no proclamations this evening and we'll move into the approval of minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the regular board meeting of April 13th, 2020. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so next, public hearings. We have none scheduled for tonight, but before we move on, uh, I would like to, if everyone is okay with this, I would like to bring the planning board um, discussion of downsizing from seven to five members. We opened that public hearing on March 9th, um, and then COVID struck, and we've only held the public hearing for the budget because it was a time-sensitive hearing. And I would argue that the planning board discussion is also time sensitive because we have our reorganization coming up in July. And I'd like the board to make a decision as to whether or not we're going to stay at seven members or we're going to right size down to five. So if everyone is okay with that, I'll ask um, Administrator Kindren for our next agenda meeting, which would be May 11th is our next scheduled board meeting. I would ask her to relist that public hearing for that meeting with the idea that we would take comments that evening and then we would make a vote on that May 28th, I believe it is. We're meeting the Tuesday after Memorial Day, correct? Yes, yes. yes. That's May 26th, I'm sorry, May 26th. Correct. Is there anybody who is opposed to that plan? Did we close the public hearing? We did. Or did no, we, we continued it. We continued it. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, we continued it. Yeah. So I'd like so, to continue it and then close it on May 11th and then do a vote on May 26th. Okay, and by that point, okay. Chip will have, do we have to do a public hearing or anything for the village law? It's, I'm just going to, I'm going to amend the law, the, the draft law that was already that was already done and you know, already put out there for the public hearing on the downsizing. I, you know, we've got to decide, or you need to decide what you want to do about the downsizing element of it. But regardless, as we discussed last time, we also sort of, we, we have to supersede New York State Village Law to essentially ratify uh, what the village has been doing for a number of years in terms of the terms. Um, because the New York State Village Law specifies something different than, than um, we've been doing. In other words, to ratify the three-year terms, the staggered three-year terms, rather than seven-year terms, if, if the board were to stay at seven, or five-year terms if the board were to go to five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you, is there... I'll circulate, I'll circulate a revised draft that that includes the term issues in there 
but I'm going to keep it right now at seven, unless you tell me you want to revise that. And then you, you can take more public comment on that. And then we can, if the, if, if we're not going to change the, the number, if the village board decides it doesn't want to change the number, then we just won't, and the, and the law is voted on, we just won't include the reduction in the number. No, did you say seven? Seven is the current size of the planning board. Um, no, I mean the, t the, uh, the length of time. The New York it's State Village three. Law specifies that subject to lo local override, the, the, the New York State Village Law specifies that the length of terms for planning board members should be equal to the number of members of the planning board. So for a seven member planning board, terms are seven years. So I'm we, sorry, Chip, if we were to um, go with five, we could still supersede that and do a three-year yes. term, which is what we've been doing, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. That, that's what I'd like to see. Yeah. I, I'd like to see that also. I, quite yeah. frankly, you know, as elected officials, we're only in this term for four years. And I think that, you know, it could go either way with any elected official's term or a planning board member's term. They can either be great at what they do or they can be horrible. And I just, I think that, you know, having someone for seven years is a bit much. I think it's a bit much of an ask as well to yeah. commit for seven years. Okay. All right, so if we're all in agreement, then on the May 11th agenda, we will have the continuation of the public hearing regarding planning board, and we'll plan on voting on that on May 26th, and we'll wrap that one up. Um, there were okay. a few, there were a few other public hearings that we opened on March 9th. We um, talked about a parking enforcement on private property. We talked about the offensive lighting um, ordinance that we were, you know, discussing. Um, the school street speed limit that was moved and voted on that evening. And Matt, the proposed parks master plan and guidance documents. We decided to hold that off until March 23rd, and that didn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And that, I, so I don't know did we, handle that. Mayor, I don't remember. Did, 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 was the public hearing on the offensive lighting and the parking enforcement closed, or were those held open? They, well, uh, I know the offensive lighting one was left open because there was some. Um, you know, I, I think I needed to look a little bit harder at that. And um, when we did have a resident speak at the public hearing, she brought up some really good points that I didn't necessarily look at prior to that. So we did keep that one open. Um, I don't recall what we did with parking enforcement on private property. I don't even know if we had anyone comment on that at the public hearing. I'd have to look at the minutes. Yeah, yeah, I, don't... I was just gonna pull them up and see if I could find. With respect to the parking enforcement, I don't recall whether anybody spoke at that public hearing either. Yeah, I just, yeah. But for what it's worth, I did. I was contacted by a property owner uh, in the village who wanted the village to enforce parking restrictions on their private property. Um, so from that, I infer <laughs> that they're they're not crazy about the idea, but I don't know that they ever officially submitted comment. I should say was contacted by an attorney for one property. But we don't like the idea anyway. Yeah, and it's totally up to, yeah, it's your, it's. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm with Basil. I don't like the idea of enforcing um, parking on private property. Mm -hmm. Is that the, the, the police can, can enforce it in the way that they can enforce it presently. You know, they can like, say a private property can still have, somebody's car towed away <laughs> if they want. Um, but it's not that the village parking enforcement officer has to go and do that. So is that, you know, being that nobody commented at the meeting when we initially opened up this public hearing on March 9th regarding parking enforcement. Is that, that was, that was closed. It okay. was closed. Okay. It was closed. We, that so, one was closed. So then we could just put that on the agenda for the 11th for a vote. 
Okay, so let's. All right. Let's okay, go. Okay, and then uh, let's see. That one was continued. What's that? That's the downsizing. Offensive lighting was continued. Was continued. Yep. Oh, we received from New York State today. Um, the two local laws have been passed. As we've received all the paperwork, so that set to go for signage. Okay, so Ben, when do you think you guys can get over there then and get up or get down the one-way signs and the speed? Tomorrow. Oh, great. We'll take down the signage and we've got some 25 mile an hour signs and we'll put those up. And great. Just been waiting for the order. It was not, we yep. got it, today was the day. Yep. And that's the, same, that's the same speed limit for any school district now, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Chip, any of these meetings that were continued, we don't have to um, publish notice, do we? I, I, you know, I don't think so. I, I mean, it'll be on the no, website. There's, there's, I suppose there's a question given everything that's happened and I don't think we're legally required to do it, and I wouldn't want to say the village has to incur that expense. I think we should probably just try to get the word out. You know, I mean, we publish our agenda mm -hmm. ahead of time on the website, yeah. and certainly yeah. Keaton can let the B know, um, and maybe they can say, you know, make it clear that those are going to be continued. It seems like a waste. We can, okay. we can post it on the on the um, on the doors too. Yeah that there will be a public continuation of a public hearing for such and such, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, just real quick on that speed limit on School Street, 20, 20 mile per hour? Yes. Right? 20. And you have 20 signs, or because you had said 25. I just want to be clear. I misspoke. We have 20 mile an hour signs. We have some okay. extras. Okay. Okay. So then, Matt, what do you want to, what are your thoughts on the proposed parks master plan and how you want to handle that in the, you know, or not? I well, I mean, I was in the middle of uh, preparing a PowerPoint presentation. I was about halfway through with it. It would probably end up being 20 minutes to a half hour. Um, I could do it via Zoom and do the PowerPoint presentation right here and share the screen like like uh, Keaton is right now and go through it and present it to everybody. And it just, you know, not as fun in, in, as it would be in person, but. I mean, it, it has its advantages too, because then it would be recorded. So it could be referred to over and over again and we'd have record of it, you know? Right. So I guess that's one plus that in the situation where. Yep. Matt, when do you so, want to do it? Well, I mean, if I get back to working on it, I could be ready by the next meeting. Um, well, you know, Matt, it, if, you're, if you're up for it, I mean, I, I agree it's not as fun as doing it in person. Um, but I, I will say, you know, I was on a conference call today with executive, um, county executive polling cars and I, I don't anticipate that social distancing is it going away anytime soon in the, in the summer months included. So I just, you know, if we are foreseeing opening up this parks master plan and getting a big audience and participation and so forth, I, I, I think if that, that's going to be a little tricky to do in yeah. a couple of months. So yeah, agreed. It's up to you. I'm going to let you, cause it's your baby and I, I'm going to let you <laughs> decide what you want to do. No, that's, that's, that's okay. And, um, and then we can we can provide the graphics digitally to the B and mm -hmm. you know just you know I was hoping to uh, have a you know something fun to talk about for once. I love that. So what do you think? Do you want to put it on for May eleventh or? Sure. Do you want to... Okay. Yeah. So Judy, we'll make a note of that. Yep. The other one that I'm going to um, defer to you, Matt, is the comprehensive revision of Chapter 47 of the Village Code Historic Preservation. We yes. opened it, and I believe we tabled it then. Is that correct, Judy? If you look at the... 
Uh, yeah, we tabled it, I think, because we got the final draft like that day or within short order of that public hearing. And none of the board members really had any time to digest it. Yeah, it's, which, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big document. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, mean, it, I mean, I don't want to speak for the HBC either, and Matt may or may not want to speak for the HBC, but I don't, I mean, it's been kicking around for a long time, so I'm sure they'd be anxious to see it move, but I don't know how times critical it is. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's been around for five years, so another couple of months isn't the end of the world, but on the other hand, there's, there's nothing yeah. in it, you know, there's really nothing in it today that isn't in it tomorrow. You know, there's some moder minor modifications from model law to model law. Most of the stuff has been amended to be specific to us. There's no like, you know, trip wires or hanging, you know, chads waiting to be found. If anything, yeah. we tried to clean yeah. most of that up. No, I, I, I agree with that characterization, man. And, and just for the benefit of the former, I mean, it, despite how long it took and a lot of the discussion back and forth about it, um, I would say that 90% of it is simply following the most recent model law from the state of New York um, with, as Matt says, some things to make it more uh, applicable to the way things are done in the village um, and to also frankly just clean up some stuff that they that, mm -hmm. that really just weren't done very well in the model but not substantive issues just organizational and inconsistencies internal inconsistencies. I would say that the the one topic that might be up for discussion is at the very very beginning of that chapter where it establishes the makeup of that board. And it it mandates seven members, it mandates yeah. a certain amount of expertise from those, you know, from those members, with a caveat that should you not be able to find the, you know, underwater basket weaver historian, then you can use, you know, someone who might not fit that criterion. But the um, uh, the question then becomes in the and the idea of right-sizing our boards is a seven-member HPC worthwhile? Or should it be downsized to five? I had this conversation with HPC. I think you can, you can imagine um, what their response was. Um, but on the other hand, they're, um, they are sort of embracing a new, a new model of, of ex officio members and uh, committee volunteers that they've never had before. So yeah. the number of bodies in the room that are voting members are not necessarily as crucial as they used to be. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll also, well, again, I, you know, again, I'm, I am my place really to make a recommendation on those sort of policy judgments, but, but it is, you know, seven members, it, 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 it can be tough for a village this size to to staff or to you know populate a board of that size and particularly where there's where there are some specific um, educational and professional uh, requirements for membership so. well and, and then to boot because it is a decision making board this body decided that it was imperative that those those voting members be village residents so we're you know, we are <laughs> shackling ourselves to our talent pool from, for that per, um, from that perspective. So, which is fine. I agree with that that policy. But um, the more people we have to find to fill that pool, the harder it is. Um, we've also ooh, we've also experienced um, we've also experienced difficult. Who's, yeah, we've experienced difficulty with. Um, quorum even you know with seven members so it's it's difficult sometimes to get enough voting members in the room mm -hmm. so my so, comment would be i think um i would have you ask hpc what their thoughts are about continuing forward with the public hearing via like via this you know via zoom um, with the understanding that, you know, it, if we don't, if we want to wait till we can get back in person, that could be several months. 
So. I don't think they're going to care either way. They're okay. just happy to see that it finally got completed and up to the board. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, you know. But assuming, but assuming they. May 11th, we can. I'm, you yeah. know, I'm just trying I, right. to put it. Yeah, in in a, assuming they meet this month, though, we can certainly ask them if if they have a view on it. Yeah, I mean, if you want to if you want to postpone putting that on the on the agenda until after their May meeting, which is the twenty sixth, so that would be putting it on our agenda for say, like June eighth. Matt, they meet the same night we do that. Yeah, that that's a, that because of that holiday. That's an un that's a conflict, you know. Nah, They're gonna have to move that meeting. All right, make it make it the first meeting in June. I think that's a good idea. Make it for June yeah. 8th on the on our board, you know, agenda, and then you can have a discussion with them. And you know, as far as the current membership, do they have all of the positions filled that the law dictates? I know that we lost Steve Dyson, who was an archaeologist and archaeologist right yeah so um there's currently yeah so there is currently a vacant seat the the way the the way the mod the law is written it those those professions are recommendations not mm -hmm. mandates okay so so we don't necessarily have to replace an archaeologist with an archaeologist um we did uh kate did recommend um i'm blanking on her name she's a I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember her name either, but there is somebody that there's has been recommended and I believe has expressed interest, but yes. Uh, yeah, she's a she's a Cayuga resident. Oh, uh, Emily Murphy. Thank you, Emily Murphy. Garrett. So no, Emily Murphy, Emily isn't Garrett. that John's wife? That's yeah. John's wife, yeah. No. <laughs> Garrett. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Garrett, Emily Garrett. Garrett. Up the last so, um yeah, so so Emily Garrett has expressed interest. She is current she had been attending meetings as you know sort of a volunteer as a non-voting member because i had didn't want to appoint her in the middle of the south cayuga district vote which has now gone on the skids primarily because they were going to be working on the design guidelines and had barely managed to scratch the surface on that and then all of this happened and they haven't had a meeting in six or eight weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I suspect based on everything that they have told us to date that they would not want to act on that nomination when permits could be issued. That was this whole idea of doing it in the fall when you know, through the winter so that when spring broke, but now permits are kind of a tricky thing too. So. I don't know where their heads are at with that right now. Obviously, I can I can talk to them sooner rather than later, but um, they weren't anywhere near, unless they've been working on it in at home, they weren't anywhere near the revising the design guidelines. So then I guess the question becomes, do we appoint Emily because it's not in the heat of the, the vote? Otherwise, she could potentially be not appointed for a year. I think we should appoint her sooner rather than later. I kind of agree. So why don't we put why don't we put her appointment on the agenda for the next meeting? Okay. All right. Who's, who's, That's good. Whose seat would whose term would she be stepping into? Uh, Steve Dyson's. And when does his term expire? That's a fine question. I mean, well, I, theoretically, I'm just wondering, just wondering a lot whether he's whether that's a seat that's up this June anyway. It could be, and and we would. Be. I just we'll we'll hit that when we get to reorg July one anyway. So yeah, whether it is or it is, it doesn't really matter. Right, whether it is or it is, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, so her appointment is May eleventh. And then you're going to have a discussion with HPC about how they want to proceed going forward with the public hearing. And then maybe you can give us an update too where they are with the design guidelines. 
Sure. How long, like, they're, how long are we thinking they're going to spend on those? Um, you know, like three months, six months, because then that would kind of dictate once those design guidelines get into place, that would then kind of dictate maybe when the whole South Cayuga discussion happens again. Right. So if you could just give, you know, give us an update at the next meeting and, and we'll kind of go from there. Matt, I don't know if you, I mean, my own person, I, I think it'd be hard for them. I mean, unless, you know, those original design guidelines um, were paid, you know, were prepared by a professional consultant mm -hmm. um, working with the commission. Um, yeah, are, are they, but I mean, I think it'd be hard to, unless they were going to hire that consultant or another consultant to help them with that process, I think it would be hard for them to turn that around quickly if they tried to do it just in-house. Well, yes and no. I mean, I think what, what was sort of interesting to watch happen when they started the process, I think you weren't at that meeting, and this goes back to like December or January. Yeah, um, I know, right. Yep. You know, they they – it spurred a lot of conversation about because I because it disturbingly some of the individuals may not have been completely um, completely up to date with what the design guidelines actually said or mandated or asked for, and then in in discussing, well, do we want this or do we want that? And what about this? And what about that? Then that brought on something else and that brought on something else. And before you know it, you know, two hours go by, but now there's been this long conversation about what are our priorities? What are we interested in? And, and are we asking for the right things? Which if for no other reason is a spectacular educational exercise um, and ultimately leads to you know, a relatively simple clausal change here, there, everywhere that we tuck in or make an exception or whatever, which was sort of the goal. The whole reason they were doing this was to identify those priorities that are the same for a residential district model versus a commercial property model and those that are different. And if there was a simple way to exclude, you know, X, Y, and Z from the residential side, but keep it in for the commercial, that was that was the goal. It turns out to be, as you say, potentially more difficult, but I don't think it's invaluable. This is this is uh, take some time though. It could very well, yes. I mean, they, they yeah, were I mean, anticipating that's, it. That's really the only point I was is that especially if they try to do it, you know, it's just any collective drafting exercise uh, is time consuming. You know, if, 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 if you try to do a, a group of volunteers to try to draft a document and even to revise a document, it just, it just it takes time. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. Well, good. Well, Matt, you'll give us an update, I guess, after the next meeting and we'll kind of move forward from there. Okay. okay. So that, that covers everything um, that we left hanging with public hearing. So unless anyone has any additional comments, we'll move into the next item. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're moving into suspension of all for public participation. Um, I make a motion to open that. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Keaton is in charge of the uh, coordination here and we just ask that if you have a comment uh, just state your name and address, and um, you know, try to keep things within three, four minutes if possible. Okay. At this time, there's only one person from the public, uh, John Seymour. Mm -hmm. um, I know that your uh, microphone and camera are muted uh, or are muted and off, but if you'd like to speak, um, please unmute yourself and uh, we'll allow you three minutes. You're there, John? Um, okay, <laughs> that's all we have from the public. Okay, so seeing none, I make a motion to close the suspension of rules for public participation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
All right, moving into reports and resolutions. Um, let's just see. Okay, so for my resolutions number one and number two, they both involve payroll vouchers and budget transfers. Um, I won't read them obviously line for line because they're all visible on the screen. So I will make a motion to approve items number one and two as they appear on the agenda. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Judy and Hazel, do you guys have the signatures you need for all that? Or do we need to swing by the office? Yes, we do. Hazel. <laughs> yes, we do. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So um, the next resolu resolution is regarding our 2020-2021 budget. And I just want to make a couple comments on this. Um, so today I was on a conference call with Erie County Executive Fuller Cars, as I said earlier. And a couple things that got brought to light during this conversation was the um, anticipated cuts of monies that we will be receiving from the state. And two in particular that were mentioned, uh, he said that we could expect up to a 50% cut in all of our CHIPS funding. Wow. So the CHIPS funding is what we're obviously using some of that. And Ben, I can let you speak to that um, for repaving or sidewalks, or do you wanna take a, give us an explanation of that? Uh, CHIPS is federal or state funding that allows us to do a little bit of repair. We don't get a substantial amount at any in the year. Um, most 86. of our road work is paid through bonding. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, the other um, mention that um, was brought out was we can probably expect a cut in sales tax anywhere from 20 to 50%. So um, I just, I thought those were numbers that needed to be spoken before we get into the budget here. Okay, and, and that's about one fifth of our income too, right? Um, it, it's hard to know how we're, how we're gonna handle that, but the fact is, is that we, we know we're gonna, we're gonna lose something. That, that's just well, almost a given. Right, so Basil, uh, Judy sent me some, uh, some, some some percentages today, so that we could. I saw that. Have, I saw that. that so, so sales tax, just for the for the record, uh, accounts for eighteen and a half percent of our annual budget. Mm -hmm. Chips accounts for basically two percent. Okay. So, call that aggregate twenty percent, mm -hmm. and if we lose up to fifty percent of both of them then we're losing 10% of our budget. Right. So if our budget's 4.3 million, that's $430,000. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, that being said, and while that's a big number, the lion's share of our budget is borne by property tax, 54% and then some. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we we're not in a business that's going to be um, directly and manifestly impacted by a loss of sales tax revenue. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big number, one-tenth of our budget, but it is not the lion's share by any stretch of the imagination. It, it will force adjustments, but we don't know what that will be at this moment. Right, there will be some belt tightening here and there but it's not, it's not like, you know, we have to, we, we're, we're not going to be in business. Okay. So I, um, I will ask Judy, after I read the resolution, um, I'm going to ask Judy to do a roll call vote on the budget. And I'm just kind of asking for it because I thought that if anyone on the board has any comments before they give their vote, I think it would be good for the public to hear, and that's really why, the only reason. Um, so I will read it, whereas the tentative budget for the 2020-2021 fiscal year has been duly represented 
to the village board by the budget officer and a duly advertised public hearing has been held thereon. I'll therefore be it resolved pursuant to section 55084 of village law that the said tentative budget and the salaries and wages as stated in the salary schedule are hereby adopted for the village of Williamsville for the 2020-2021 fiscal year as follows. Um, general fund, I'll let you, do. can you get that up there, Keaton? Yeah, thank you. So there's the general fund equalization. The water fund is $1.87 surcharge and the sewer fund is also as it appears. We also have the Glen Park fund and the debt service fund. So Judy, do you wanna go ahead and do the roll call vote? Sure. <clears throat> Trustee Murphy? Uh, yes. Trustee Yates? Um, I'd like to just say a few things kind of before I give my vote. Um, we had a couple more questions that came in over the week and I just felt that for me it was important to kind of not directly answer those uh, directly, but basically I think one of the questions was is, you know, prudently should we be cutting the budget at this point? Um, you know, we started this coming in um, really already over the tax uh, cap um, when we started back in February. So there was, we were really running an uphill battle at that point. So where we sat, we had already made our decisions at that point when this all hit. So in our budget cycle, um, it's really hard to kind of turn the, the bus around. What the things that are in there already are things that have been kicked down the road for many years and things that I don't know that we can continue to try and kick down the road. Um, we don't really know where we're gonna be. We don't know where funding is gonna come from the feds at this point. Um, that's gonna be one of my upcoming resolutions. But I think that if we were to cut a budget and then we don't get the funds we think we're gonna get, I think it lopsides us even further. We can't come back and ask for additional taxes mid um, budget year. So. I think, unfortunately, I wish we could do more right now, but there's nothing we can really do. Um, we have decided, I think we'll announce later, you know, we are gonna have some pool savings costs this year. Currently our court clerk is laid off. Um, we have a part-time clerk that's laid off. We have a, a position in the front office that we're probably gonna hold off on filling due to this situation. Um, so there are things that we're doing. There will be things we'll have to cut you know, we may be even looking at furloughs for um, some of our employees. So we don't really know where we're going to be um, as of today. We just don't have the answers, unfortunately. So I think for me, I think we have to keep it the way it is. Um, and so my, for that, my vote is yes. Okay, thank you. Trustee Etu. Um, I'd like to also offer a few comments uh, echoing uh, Trustee Yates' sentiments there. Um, I said at last meeting, um, I'll say it again, we, you know, we walked into this cycle. We've gotten quite a bit of um, feedback saying that uh, we're being irresponsible and um, we should be working within our means and uh, that, you know, this crisis uh, pandemic um, is not the time to be doing this. But, um, you know, to those, to those claims, I, I challenge the, the individuals who who said that to um, to walk a mile in our shoes um, from being irresponsible uh, and working within our not working within our means um, the costs of doing business as the village municipality uh, resulted in overruns on the first day of the budget cycle if we did nothing at all uh, except pay bills pay paychecks and keep the, the, the lights in, um, on the village hall, we would be short $75,000, which would require us to go over the 2.2% tax cap imposed on us by Albany. That would mean that we would literally be doing nothing but keeping the, the village in business. So if, if we're irresponsible for having gone over the tax cap, by even one percentage point, then I guess the irresponsibility um, is in maintaining a village at all. Um, the second comment that we're, it's, um, you know, we should be working within our means. Well, unfortunately, our means are limited to uh, a very small municipality and the requirements that are placed upon us from outside the municipality, Albany, insurance, 
you dues, pensions, things of this nature, cause the, the village to run perpetually hot when it comes to budget time. And at, there are there is need for a course correction. We will not be able to sustain our current trajectory at 2% every year, year on year, over and over when costs are going up at four, five, six percent. It's it's just not physically possible. The last comment with regards to doing this at, during the pandemic, um, that's a conflated and um, unnecessarily uh, related topic. This budget cycle starts in February um, in time for a, a June 1 fiscal year. The fact that this occurred, that the <laughs> occurred in March, purely coincidental, it is unfortunate uh, that the two are happening at the same time. Uh, but when it comes to a question of, is this uh, the right time to do it? I would ask, if it is not now, then when? Is next year the right time? Is the year after that the right time? I would argue that if you ask, if you poll the constituency, they would tell you that it's never the right time to raise taxes. And unfortunately, we just have to pull that trigger. Um, in, case, in the case of people not having a lot of funds right now, that this is not a good time to be at, to reaching into people's pockets. I would say that I totally understand that as a village trustee, I sit here in front of you uh, collecting unemployment. I am not alone. You are not alone. I am making this decision for myself as a village resident, for the five board members as village residents, and for all the constituents as village residents. So this is not reaching into people's pockets. It totals because it's been a little un unclear as to exactly what this really means for each individual property owner. There's been percentages floated around. We're going over the 2% tax cap. It's 10%, it's 12%, it's 18%. Percentages are meaningless if you don't have a context. So the context is that for a property that is valued at $250,000 in the village of Williamsville, the tax levy next year will be $188 more than it is this year. That is $15 a month. That's four, that's four cups of coffee a month more. But with that, we will be able to maintain our properties. We will be able to upgrade our parks. We will be able to do the things that make the village of Williamsville the reason that we live here. Moving forward, we do not have the opportunity to just pull this trigger every year. Oh, we're going over this year. We're going over next year. We're going over the year after that. No, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, there are no penalties for us to go over the tax cap if we follow the procedure of doing that. But on the other hand, it does look quite irresponsible to our auditors when we go over year after year after year after year. And that is not our goal. That is not our um, approach. Our approach is to right size, course correct, and then maintain. So we need to play a little catch up. And unfortunately it's happening at an unusual period of time in our village. Now the last thing is someone commented about the tax burden at this time when people are short on cash and when it's due. The tax levy is due July 1st, every year, all the time. For those who have a mortgage, it is paid out of your escrow. We are not reaching into your pocket. You're not writing us a check. You never have. For those who do not have a mortgage and who do write a check, then the question becomes, do you pay it July 1st? There could potentially be late fees for not July 1st. If it's not paid by November 1st, it gets sent up to the county and the county puts it on your county tax bill and we get reimbursed down the road. So if you don't have that extra cash right now, 
don't panic. So, with that said, I vote yes. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Piazza? Uh, I, I'm not going to uh, beat a dead horse, so to speak, but just, just one little comment that e each year, or almost every year, um, the, the uh, state legislature, um, in, in their, their wisdom, and maybe not thinking through what they're doing sometimes, they, they will advocate something which is quite good, whatever it is. And, and um, unfortunately, um, those, those actions rarely are attached to an increase in funding for, this, for the municipalities to con continue whatever it is that sounds like a good idea. So we, we've had little unfunded mandate additions um, almost every year in some small way. And I don't have the list in front of me, but the, the fact is um, we, we get to the point every once in a while that the straw does break the camel's back. And, and this is one of those years where we can't stay within the state mandated 2.2% uh, um, and, and maintain the services that, that we all expect in the village of Williamsville. So it, 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 it's not done flippantly. This, this board has, has had many discussions and, and agonized over this, but unfortunately it, it is what it is to keep things going. And, and I'll just leave it at that. And obviously I'm voting yes. Okay. And Mayor Rogers. Um, so I will just kind of offer just a few comments. I think, you know, I agree with everything trustee to um, laid out very well and explained very well. And I, and I think that that probably cleared it up for a lot of people as to exactly how much more they were paying. But I will say, you know, there's never, there's never an ideal time for a tax increase. It's something that no um, elected official wants to talk about. And it's something that as residents, we don't embrace either. But I will say that in order for us to continue to be a village, um, this is a year where we need to do some much needed improvements that have been discussed by many boards before me, before my time on the board. And um, when it came time though, to put the numbers in those columns on the budget sheet, they were never put down. So this year is different. We've gone through a lot of items that um, have been put off and we decided that we were going to tackle those this year. And with that, I vote yes. Okay, motion passed five to zero. Okay, so resolution number five. I'm sorry, resolution number four. Yes, four. Um, right. So resolution number four involves um, million paving projects that we're doing this year for the village roads. Um, ben, do you want to go over that list of the roads that we're targeting this year? Yeah, sure. We're starting in North Long, doing Glen Avenue, Eagle, Oak Grove in its entirety, and Castle Creek. And Castle Creek is a later addition. How long has it been since that road's been done? Since the development was built, maybe in 20 years ago. Okay. That road hasn't been touched in a very long time. Okay. I wouldn't say it was a late addition, it was an omission. Anyone have any questions? No. Okay, so um, I will make a motion to approve resolution number four as it appears on the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution number five has to deal with election inspectors for our special election. The election to date is still set for Tuesday, June 16th. Um, we have not received any further guidance from the state on moving that election out. Uh, so as I know we've had a few phone calls at Village Hall inquiring about that. So I, I would just say to to everyone that as soon as we get some information about whether or not that date is happening, uh, we'll get it out to the public. 
I mean, at this point, do we even have people on the ballot? No. No, because nobody uh, people, can still get signatures. Signatures are still in process. Yeah. Is there a due date now for signatures? May 12th. Hmm. Okay. Um, I just want to say that this resolution naming these inspectors, they're appointed for one year. So if the date changes, we don't have to reappoint inspectors. Okay. All right. So I will make a motion to approve resolution five as it appears on the agenda with the inspectors listed accordingly. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, resolution number six. See Sorry, just a quick question. Um, have we ever done mail-in ballots for village elections? Yes. When? Not everybody, but we've had we've had people do mail-ins. We do absentee ballots. Absent, I mean absentee ballots. Pardon me. Well, can we do that this year for the whole village? I mean, the state's doing it for the whole state. I suppose. <laughs> You know, that, that's a good <laughs> question. I, I'd have to look to see exactly what the government, how broad the executive order was on that, because as I, my understanding is the, but the board of elections doesn't send out our ballots, the village's ballots, right? Or do they? You know, they I, that's a great question, the, Matt. We'll have to, I think we'll just have to take a look at that, but I, yeah. I think it could be authorized. The, the, the board does prepare the ballots, then they send them to us. The envelopes for absentee ballots do get sent from Village Hall. But, but my, see, I, I, I believe the most recent executive order on that was instructing the Board of Elections to send out postage prepaid absentee ballot application. I, you know what, I'll have to take a look look to see exactly what it says and whether or not for any reason that that wouldn't apply to village elections. I, that's a good question though, but I don't know the answer to it right now. So I think though, but the, the bigger the issue is that like who's on the ballot? I, you know, we're not, I mean, there's, no I, I can't believe the that that election get people out getting signatures to get on. The ballot. Yeah. And, and, and considering that the pause has been extended already to past that deadline for collecting signatures. Mm -hmm. Seems very unlikely to me that that date's going to stick, but obviously we don't know yet. So we're going to have to right. wait, like you said, Mayor. I, I think we just have to wait to see what's going to happen and get the word out. But it, it does seem unlikely that that date's going to be able to stick. Aren't, aren't the March elections postponed until the week... Um, after our elections? No, same date. They moved it because yep. oh. they didn't, okay. the, the primary didn't want to have village elections the same date as their election. So village elections was moved then to June 16th and that's currently where it sits right now. All right. Okay, so we'll just wait and see, um, I guess. Is there anyone that we can prompt to let us know? That NICOM, has, NICOM has been on this. They okay. did um, yeah. a seminar on it a week ago Friday. And as soon as they hear anything, they're going to let us know. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I was, I was talking to um, someone at the Board of Elections, and she was saying she was going to let me know if she heard anything but she said basically kind of sit and wait and see what's going to happen because you really can't go out and get signatures because you're not really supposed to be close to people right okay all right so it's a waiting game we'll just wait and see okay okay so um resolution number six is a resolution to close garrison pool for this summer and um you know i i think that you know as a parent um it isn't an easy decision to make, but I just can't envision us getting everything together, which includes, you know, hiring the lifeguards, 
getting the pool ready for, you know, to have it filled. We need to have it inspected with the Department of Health. Um, there's some type of a safety manual that needs to be updated that goes along with all this, training the pool attendants. So it's a lot of, all of that needs to begin now and should, and, you know, customarily is already beginning at Village Hall. But um, so I, I think that was the big reason why I pushed to kind of just say, let's just make a decision. Because being that we are a small village, I can't foresee us waiting until May 15th and, you know, jumping to get everything online by a June opening. Um, in addition, we've also had one or two pool attendants from previous years who have reached out to us to inquire as to whether or not they would be able to retain employment with the village for the summer. And I didn't necessarily want to have um, students, you know, hanging out there waiting and expecting the village pools to open when they can potentially go out and find other type of gainful employment for the summer. So, and, you know, there were probably some other things that I'm forgetting to mention, but um, the, the bright side of all of this, though, is that I spoke with Judy today, and we will have a cost savings of $12,138 by not opening the pool this year. So I think that um, in, in times like this, I'll, I will always take a bright note, and that's the silver lining. So with that just, being said, you, I'm sorry. Uh, just a comment. Um, I, I may as well let you know ahead of time. I won't vote for this today. I, I would almost rather let us wait a month on, only because we, ha we have the possibility of a very warm summer. Um, and even if we had it in an abbreviated session, um, we, we might want to have something um, late, uh, later on. Um, I, I'm going to ask if, if we would consider not making this decision today. I don't know if you folks agree with that or not, but that's my, that's where I, I, I would rather not do this today. Um, I, I think- Any other I comments? Understand, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're, what you're saying, Basil, but when I spoke with uh, the person who has been handling the opening of this poll for the past, you know, 15 plus years, and she walked me through everything that needed to begin in order to get everyone lined up. And that process is actually started in April, which is now, you know, we're probably two weeks late even. I, I, I realized that we'd have to scramble a little if we were going to open it and not make that decision for another month. But I, I would still rather um, wait if we could. I would prefer to make a resolution tonight and then do a roll call vote if everyone's okay with that. Sure. Okay, so I'll read the resolution then. Resolve that the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, is causing many changes to the way life was lived prior to March 7, 2020, and resolve that the governor's executive orders have set restrictions on social gatherings and social distancing. It has caused the village to make some difficult decisions. Now, therefore, the Garrison Park Pool were not open for the summer of 2020. Judy, can you do a roll call vote, please? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Uh, yes. Trustee Yates? I, on the question, um, I, I understand Basil's uh, concern. You know, I think we're all doing that with uh, upcoming events that are going to occur in the summer, and, you know, when do we make that call? Um, I do think that, you know, prudently, it's probably the best decision that we do close it. Um, I know the town is probably considering already from what I understand, uh, closing some of their pools, um, the ones that are more spaced out, they will. So we are town residents, so you know our pool may be closed, it may be inconvenient, but um, hopefully if there's any pools open, at least there will be one accessible to us as well as town residents. So my vote is yes. Trustee E2. I'm torn on this one. It's, it's a difficult decision. I agree with Basil to a certain degree. I agree with the mayor for, to a certain degree. I've talked about it here in my own house. You know, the, the trouble with the Garrison Park pool is it's relatively small. And I suspect that even if, you know, phase one of the, of the governor's um, uh, reopening approach begins May 16th, that um, social distancing will still be a, a mandate 
and it will be very difficult to maintain a six foot spacing of individuals. It would require us to maintain a certain quantity of people and, and turn others away, which puts an undue burden on these high schools uh, um, attendance that we're going to be, that we could potentially be hiring and, and potentially puts them as well in a hazardous condition. I don't, you know, I don't know if my teenage daughter would, if I would be in favor of my teenage son or daughter being a pool attendant at this, you know, at this time. Um, so I, I reluctantly, I uh, have to agree with the mayor and I think we should postpone opening the pool this year. Uh, Deputy Mayor Piazza. Well, I, I've already um, mentioned my, my reasoning, and and um, I, I I hope. Uh, well, I don't know what I hope. I, I, it's just that it's the only pool we have now, and and we have a lot of parents that do use it, and I, I'd almost like to, as I said, keep this door open. But I but uh, apparently I'm in the minority. So as I always say. We can agree to disagree without being disagreeable. And I say, no. Okay, thank you. And Mayor Rogers. I vote yes. Motion passed four to one. So my last resolution, resolution number seven is, um, is basically, it's on the screen and it's lengthy, so I'm not going to read it. Um, essentially what we're doing because of the COVID-19, we have uh, both union and non-union employees who risk losing um, unused personal time and vacation time, which to my understanding needs to be used by a certain date. And Can I, I just, did, I, yep, I don't, don't want to um, shut you off, but did we get a second on the pool opening, pool closing? Pool sure. Closing? That, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write it down. Sorry. Got it now. All right, Deb. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. That's okay. Um, so basically the, um, what you're seeing in front of you is um, to just kind of override that existing policy in all fairness to our employees who are, you know, putting in their time. And I feel that, you know, if we were to not allow them to carry over any the accrued, unused personal time, vacation time, et cetera. Um, I think we're doing a great disservice to them. So that's basically in a nutshell what this resolution is about. And um, so I will make a motion to pass resolution number seven as it appears on the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that, oh, I got eight. All right. Um, that I can't see it. Let's just hold on. Right. Resolved that the okay. So resolution number number eight is resolved that the proposal from William Shutt and Associates for engineering services related to the 2020 asphalt replacement project is hereby approved in the amount of eleven thousand six hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, Deb, do you have do you have to go off the agenda for this one? No, it's on the agenda. It's no, I think it's, it's, but it's in here. So I don't think I do, right? Right. I think what happened is it, it got added. And oh, I'm sorry. I, I, stuff I, oh, was printed before. Right it was okay. Printed. I have a paper copy. Yeah. yeah it's, it's in My mistake. Paper I have a copy. paper copy. It doesn't have it. Yeah. But it's, it's, yeah. Yes. Okay. That's why I read it because I didn't, it's All not right, on that's, my paper that, either. That's okay. And do you know what the right. um, estimated construction value of the project is? Yeah, it's in a four to five hundred thousand back about last year when it was estimated. Um, given the climate and everything else, we might get lucky and it might come under. So Ben, with that four to five hundred thousand, does that include Castle Creek? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a minor. That's a minor ad. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's it for my reports and resolutions. And next on the agenda for his reports and resolutions is Trustee Ace. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, reports, uh, um, we are still continuing to uh, work uh, as a farmer's market to try to 
figure out if we will open on May 16th or if it's going to be pushed into June. So uh, hopefully we'll have a decision this week um, with whether or not we'll do that. Um, we're also looking at trying to offer curbside pickup so that uh, those residents who don't feel safe uh, engaging in the farmer's market in the beginning, uh, you have an option as well. Um, so we're working out that as well. Um, the town is uh, apparently uh, potentially able to help the farmer's market this year with uh, using some of the CDBG funding uh, when it's COVID related. So there will be some costs incurred by the farmer's market. So there's a lot of details, a lot of moving parts that we're working on with that. Um, uh, Keaton and I met with the uh, WBA. We had a Zoom meeting today to kind of hear where some of our local small businesses are um, and how their process has been for filing um, for the PPP program and other stuff. So the town has started basically a startup program um, of what we do in reverse when we reopen. So they're reaching out and they've created a task force to, is to help work with the small businesses so that um, we can make it as painless as possible. Um, this is clunky, it will be clunky. We've never done any of this, as the governor said. <laughs> There's nobody around that's ever experienced anything like this. So um, we all have to be patient and work uh, through this together. Um, we are still waiting to decide on the art festival, so that's still up in the air. Um, it doesn't look good, but we had decided we would wait till mid-May uh, to see kind of where things are and where that's heading. Um, the Garden Walk uh, group committee had met as well, um, and we're going to hold off on that. And it may look different this year than it has in the past, so uh, more to come on that as well. Um, and I think that's all I have reports-wise. Um, the first resolution I have uh, is in regards to the CARES Act, um, and as you read the resolution, um, you can see that the, the federal government basically left out all municipalities that did not have uh, 500,000 residents or, um, or more. So it excludes us. It also excludes the town of Amherst, which we are residents of the town as well. So um, basically, we're signing on of, of all the other local governments, not only in western New York, but uh, of all of New York State to say, wait, you need to also help us as well. And so that's why we say it's, we're in a challenging time budget-wise um, uh, and we need the help. So this uh, basically resolution here, and I won't read it in its entirety because it is fairly long, um, but uh, that's basically what we're wanting to move tonight, so. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the second resolution is uh, regarding um, uh, our Arbor Day. So that uh, this year we're, not, we're uh, suggesting it's a, a June 6th. Um, it will be in conjunction with the farmer's market. Um, hopefully we're open that day. Um, I know that also uh, there is a Earth Day celebration. I think the committee has decided to postpone that um, and it may look different. I know the mayor had had some suggestions. So some of our events may go on this year, they'll just look very different. So um, I'll uh, accept that resolution as it is written for June 6th. Um, the trees were ordered, so um, the trees will come in and we'll work out a way so that everybody can safely pick up a tree if they want, um, or maybe we even deliver them or something. So again, we'll be evolving what's going on. So with that, I'll look for a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's all I have for now. Okay, thank you, Trustee. Thank you. Um, and next for his reports and resolutions is Trustee E2. Well, hot on the heels of what uh, <coughs> Trustee Yates was just talking about. Um, you know, it, it's uh, sort of a funny thing. I mean, this past Wednesday was the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Mm -hmm. um, historically in Williamsville, we have postponed the celebration of Earth Day because the earth generally isn't very accommodating when it comes to the weather on, in, in mid-April in Williamsville. So uh, we're going to celebrate the Earth Day, uh, as uh, uh, Trustee Yates said, on June 6th. And the uh, Environmental Advisory Commission often plans, you know, a multiple vendor event. And I suspect that that will take it in a different form. But, you know, at, at a minimum, you know, the board and the Environmental Advisory Committee would would recommend that uh, the residents take advantage of the, the nicer weather that I'm sure we will have on June 6th and do those types of activities that would be uh, beneficial to uh, the quality of life and uh, environmental quality in, in the community. So uh, I'll just read the very end here. So now 
Therefore, be it resolved that the Village of Williamsville Board of Trustees hereby proclaims Earth Day to be celebrated in the Village of Williamsville on Saturday, June 6th, 2020, with a variety of educational Earth-focused activities for the community. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I'd like to make a motion to go off agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have a... Uh, uh, agenda to um, a, a new resolution to add. So um, uh, due to the current uh, situation and the need for social distancing and remote meetings and things like this, um, we are going to uh, try to get our land use boards, our planning board, our zoning board, our historic preservation commission back up and running uh, on a regular schedule at their regular scheduled meetings but doing it virtually um, you know, like Zoom meetings. So, uh, whereas the members of the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals and Historic Preservation Commission of the Village of Williamsville are required by state and or local law to complete uh, four hours of training each year to more effectively carry out their duties. And whereas the enabling statutes mandating this required land use training further provide that such training be approved by the Board of Trustees and Whereas due to the ongoing state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and certain executive orders issued by Governor Cuono, including EO 202.1 and EO 202.15, the land use boards now face new legal and practical requirements in conducting public meetings essential to the operation of such land use boards. Whereas the availability of in-person required land use training has been effectively eliminated by the ongoing COVID-19 state of emergency, and whereas the village has budgeted funds to cover the cost of the members of the land use boards to complete the required land use training and the provision of legal services, and whereas Bond, Shenick and King, PLLC, attorneys of record for the village, has developed a one hour online webinar to assist municipalities and their land use boards to conduct open meetings in a legal and effective manner during the COVID-19 state of emergency, and the Board of Trustees finds that such training will be of benefit to the members of the Land Use Board and their officials and employees of the village. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board hereby authorizes the members of the Land Use Boards and other appropriate staff and officials to participate in the BSK Open Meetings Training Seminar, either by participating in the live webinar or watching a recording thereof and certifies that such participation shall satisfy one hour of the required land use training. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's it for me. Matt, when is the webinar, do you know? That is entirely up to uh, Mr. Greco. We're gonna send out a, um, uh, Keaton's gonna be sending out a doodle poll to the planning, zoning, and HPC members to try and find some uh, convenient dates within the next week because planning theoretically is going to be holding their first virtual meeting a week from tonight. Yeah, so Basil, I, so I, I'm, I'm really very flexible this week. So we're gonna try to see, Keaton's gonna pull the, the land use board members, see what their availability is, or at least for the greatest number. And then we're just gonna schedule it and we'll, we'll do it. And again, for people who can't do it, we will record it and make it available. Okay. And, and well, by the way, obviously, you know, to the extent any of you <laughs> want to uh, participate in that too, um, you know, obviously you're not, you're, exa you're not required to have the training, but to the extent you might find it interesting, <laughs> you're certainly welcome to right. sit in on it as well. I want you yeah. to let, let us know when. Yeah, thank and thanks for putting that together. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Chip. Yes, thanks, Chip. Yeah, Basil, if you want to participate, you got to start about a half hour early. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I just wanted to say one last thing while we're on this topic. You know, I think that I wanted to make sure the public understood kind of why we were doing this was that, you know, as, as we're paused currently, we want to make sure that when we come out of this and we can safely get construction going again, we want basically those projects to be ready so that we can hit the ground running and get the economy moving as quickly yeah. as we can. So um, this is a way to do it. So thank you guys for helping, Chip. Sure. 
That's right. Great. Okay. Anything else, Matt? Nope. All right. So next for his reports and resolutions is <laughs> Murphy. First, Thank we you, need Mary. to return to regular agenda. Oh. Oh, Make a motion to return to regular agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Trustee Murphy, you're up. Oh, thank you so much, Mayor. Um, I don't have any uh, resolutions this evening. Um, as for reports, none of the committees um, have met uh, the past month, obviously, because of the, the pause and the social distancing going on. Um, I just wanted to bring up the one other thing that I emailed out earlier about um, that we look into the possibility of the low income senior exemption, um, just to see how we can uh, get that more up to date because that hasn't been looked at in, I think, almost 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. So just again, I had another correspondence about that uh, last, last week. So just want to bring that up again that we can you know keep discussing it and maybe put it on the agenda for next meeting. Yeah. John, one one must we do it to make sure it's ready for the following budget year? Uh, by by June first, we have to have uh, right. something in by June first for the twenty twenty two budget. All Our right. Tax, tax roll. Do do we need a public hearing for this? My guess is yes, but I'm going to have to look. I don't know because, again, you haven't, the, the village hasn't done it in so long, and I haven't, I, I haven't looked to see what the procedural requirements are to do that, but my guess is it will require a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, at our next meeting, we should call for a public hearing. Then. Well, why don't we call for it now? The, the, um, well, I, I mean, I don't, John, do you have enough wording you can put together to call for a public hearing? Uh, I mean, I could, I, you get actually you needing words. All you have to do is call to advertise for the public hearing Yeah. for okay. the May 11th meeting okay. regarding low income, uh, senior exemption. Okay. Can you repeat that one more time? What you want me to say? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't Auth catch it. <laughs> authorize the administrator to advertise okay. public hearing for. Okay. Uh, so well, I just first wanna... of all, oh, first yeah. we have to go back go off, off agenda. agenda. Oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, person move off agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So I just would like to um, ask the administrator if she could advertise a public hearing for um, the next meeting uh just to, for the discussion or for public hearing regarding the um senior low income exemption second all in favor aye. 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 and then back to regular agenda uh to, to back to uh regular agenda second all in favor aye, aye. aye. Okay. On, on that notion as well, I think I think it was Matt that brought up a, a, a good point uh, in one of the email conversations that we should try and add this, I think, every year to our reorg so that way we re revisit this every year and see where it is. Or I think it's a good, I think it's a good placeholder to stick it. Good yeah, point. At least, at least with regards to we gotta we need to be more in tune with when the town redoes this because they don't they don't do it every year. They did just redo it, so it you know maybe it's every five years or whatever. But when you know we need to be at least a little bit more cognizant of when they're doing that, or they need to let us know when they're doing that, so that we're not playing catch up two decades after the fact. Right. Speaking of reorganization, if everyone can kind of start to think about reaching out to your respective committees and um, seeing who is interested in staying on for, you know, whether it's another year or, you know, three years or so forth. Just so from reorganization, um, we've got, you know, we've got that all lined up. Can we, uh, Judy, can you email out the uh, reorg uh, resolutions? From last year? Yeah, for whatever we're probably going to do this year, even if we wanted to pre-populate those, because then we can just basically take and fill those in. Right, that's usually what we do. Um, you can can it wait till I get back to work? <laughs> sure. I'll probably be <laughs> back in the office as of May fifth. Okay. okay. 
I mean, I can look and see if I can get it together, but it's, it's, it's more difficult to pull because I can't make copies and, and, and stuff. So I'll, I'll yeah. see what I can do from here, but um, definitely I, it's something I can do once I get back into the office. Okay. All right. With the worksheets, we could go ahead and start populating and writing them in individually with our committees. Right. Well, I think too, the fees, you know, any type of restructuring of permit fees and, um, you know, park shelter rental fees and, you know, all of that, I think we should start discussing now and planning for July. Right. Because weren't we looking at trying to add um, a rental to, was it Glen Park or South Long or something? Because we didn't already have a structure set up for one of them. Could be both. Uh, no, we were talking about we were talking about South Long. Yeah, that's it. Um, but that was in context of that um, bikers, bikers fundraiser, yeah, bikers. fundraiser <laughs> thing. But it does bring up a point. You know, we should maybe already have it in line, so that way at least it's on the website and there's already a fee structure in line for it, right? Right. Because it may come up again, although it may not happen this year, but. Yep. So I, Judy, do you just want to um, talk about how we're handling shelter rentals when folks call into Village Hall? Just so we're all sure. on the same page. Currently, we're still getting a lot of inquiries for um, shelter rentals. So we are taking the reservations. Um, people are paying them with their deposit. We do explain to them the whole situation with the COVID-19 and the social distancing. And if we have to... Um, cancel their reservation, we will give them a refund in full, even though our policy is 50%. But this is, you know, unique circumstances and we will refund 100%. Okay. Um, Any questions? Yeah, Judy, should, should we at least keep back a, a five or 10% administrative charge? I don't think it's necessary. Okay. I mean, it's up to you. You guys are the board, but I would. It actually creates more work. Yeah. No. Um, well, all right. Then never mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and um, is that everything, Trustee Murphy? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So next for his reports and resolutions is um, Deputy Mayor Piazza. Um. Just, just one side item as, as a jolly boy. Um, we have not yet made a decision on uh, canceling old home days for this year, although I think we probably will be doing so. But they haven't, uh, the final decision has not yet been made. Just, just so you're aware of that. I do, I do have one resolution for the fire department. Resolved that. Natanius Shita. Does anyone know if I'm saying that name right, by the way? I have no idea. Um, Matanius. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it there. Matanius Shita. Matanius? I don't know. Anyway, Who were the Mr. teacher, Basil? Mr. Shita. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, residing in 41 Land, Williamsville, is hereby appointed as a member of the Williamsville Fire Department, effective May 1st, 2020. Second. Uh -huh. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's it for me. Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so next for um, staff reports, Administrator Kindren. Um, just. Keep doing what we're doing, be safe, and be healthy. Amen to that. Attorney Greco? Uh, nothing really to report. I just, uh, I think we went the longest period of time but without a new executive order this uh, past week. So uh, that's, that's good, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, nothing, uh, uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Uh, Kruchi Villanen? No, we're uh, moving ahead at half force every other day, um, getting done what needs to be done. Um, and hopefully we can get back to full forces here soon. 
Okay, go. Um, community Development Director DePriest. Um, I just had one thing. I, I sent it out by uh, email earlier today. Uh, I'm going to take off the, uh, the share so that I can take a look at it and call it up. It's from uh, Julie Yates. Um, the Amherst EOC is um, uh, trying to facilitate a connection um, between EOC and um, areas uh, like local stakeholders, public and private service providers, us, the village. Um, and uh, they have a survey that um, um, they asked that we complete. So um, maybe uh, me, Judy, Deb, or whomever, um, I mean, I, I sent it along to everybody. So if anybody wants to answer any of those questions, um, you know, feel free and, you know, I'll, I'll get it all together and we'll send it along to to Julie uh, ASAP, uh, told her to right. get it to her sometime this week. So, so the responder is the village board. Is that basically it? Yeah, she um, she said it, it could be me. It could have been Judy or the village board. Wh whomever wants to, um, you know, offer um, offer comments on the survey. It, it's you know, it's pretty basic. You know, please provide the COVID nineteen impact area working group you're currently working with. You know, that's the easy one. That's just, uh, you know, yeah. EOC, yeah. Uh, Julie, you know, you know, it, are we affected uh, um, or currently operational? Um, if your organization or business is not operating now, what current goals or plans do we have for reopening? You know, just little things like that. Um, I, I don't know that we've really talked about um, any reopening because um, you know, I don't know how much there is to reopen besides just saying, hey, feel free to use the playgrounds and everything again, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, we can get into that this week and send it back. So Yeah, I yeah I'll, I'll respond I, and we, you can take yeah. our collective responses then. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I was looking for. You know, that way we all we all have some input, and um, it it's the most complete survey that they can that they can have. So, okay. Yeah, I, I will respond to that too. I took a look at it, but I think it's it's going to be a lot of you, know, you and Judy as well, kind of. Yeah. Because you've been, uh, you know, probably you know handling a lot of those, um, you know, items that those questions touch mm -hmm. on. And just real quick, real while we're on parks, um, you know, my thought is, you know, we're not closing our parks. The parks are open, you know, people can walk through them and, you know, practice social distancing. Uh, what about anybody's thoughts on the swings or the playground equipment? In what way? Well, we have you, signs posted at the parks, um, South Long and Garrison and Island, that something along the lines is, you know, health warning, contamination of equipment may be possible, something along that line. So we got those from the town. Um, they installed those at their town parks, and um, they gave us, you know, a few for our, our parks and installed them. So I guess maybe it's more of a legal question for Chip. So you know, is there any additional liability for us? I guess, like, how do you really close that play equipment? I mean, if you put a caution tape around it, it's going to get torn down or people are going to walk right under it. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, what what a lot of other municipalities are doing is, is trying to essentially, I mean, some of them are doing that, signage, taping, or, you know, taking down some of the uh, equipment but i don't think <clears throat> you know this is all uncharted territory I, i'm not aware of any claims against a municipality that they were negligent by you know somehow not uh preventing people from using uh park equipment um and given that parks are open uh across the state for the for the most part i I, I don't see that that's a, a significant liability risk, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that people won't 
you know, make those sorts of claims. I just think like so many things like this, I just think the village has to do what it can reasonably do uh, to try to <clears throat> discourage, uh, you know, um, social gatherings uh, in, in the parks in ways that, that are not consistent with the social distancing mandates that we're all under. <clears throat> Do we, do we need a sign reminding people about the social distancing anyway? No. It hurt. No. Where? How many? I, mean, I, where? I, I don't I'm just throwing Every it out sidewalk there. in the village? Well, I, I thought you were talking specifically in the parks, but yeah. No, I, I, think, I meant just the parks, yeah. I think Ben should wear a sandwich board. Just walk around. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, we could put something on the sign in front of Village Hall. Yeah, yeah, that's a good reminder. So, so what if that, right. like, parks are open? Or, what, what would or you... no, about just remember social distancing. Look, if people, you know, <laughs> they don't know by now. Come don't on, know social distancing <laughs> by now. I know they have to, they have to be living in a cave. Let me just yes. go on record as saying that. Okay, like I just I I think that that's that's a, a waste of money and a, and a waste of effort, quite frankly. And, okay. You know, so I, I guess, you know, I just wanted to have this conversation because, you know, I am a firm believer that we need to keep the parks open. Um, I'm not interested in closing the parks because quite frankly, they serve for people's mental health as much as they do their physical health. And what else are we, what else are we going to give people? I mean, when everything else is on pause and there's, there's like nothing left to do. People want to get out when it's nice and they want to walk. And I think we have the ideal place here, living in the village of Williamsville that offers that. And people can be smart and they can social distance. And I don't have a superhero cape that I'm going to put on and keep people six feet apart in the parks. They're going to have to do it for themselves. And I think that to let a few people ruin it for the greater good is the wrong way to go about it. So. By, by the way, I've been to Glen Park twice over the last couple of weeks. By and large, people are not um, gathering in large numbers, but there are a good number of people wandering through the park mm -hmm. because it's such a pretty area. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about, I think, Deb, you and I talked about, you know, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to chat with Ben about it, and maybe the board should also weigh in too. It's my thought was is get the uh, picnic tables out from underneath the pavilion to spread them out and just drag them 10, 12 feet apart from each other out in the main, I call it the quad, that green grassy area. And that way, if, if people on a Saturday want to go grab a, you know, a picnic lunch from one of our local restaurants doing, you know, takeout, come sit in the park and engage in the park. Um, so I, it's, it's something different to do and to help our businesses as well. Good thought. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I think that, you know, the reality is, is people, those tables are there and wherever they are, people are going to be sitting in them and using them. Right. And I think that, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to keep people out of the parks unless you have an armed guard at the entrance of the, at every entrance. I mean, you're not going to, the weather's getting nice. People want to be out. They want to be out walking and they want to be out enjoying the parks, period. Yeah. And if you want to use it, you may want to bring your own sanitizer and clean it down before you sit on it with your family. Which is what I will be doing. I will be bringing my yeah. own Lysol wipes and my own hand sanitizer, and I will be enjoying those amenities this summer. Yeah. Sounds good. Else to comment on parks. Awesome. None here. Okay. Um, Deputy Treasurer Pasco, any reports or updates? Um, not at this time. Uh, stay safe, everybody. <laughs> That's always true. Yeah. Well, Hazel and I did talk today. I gave I gave her a little assignment about the uh, <laughs> the hallway, that back hallway into our offices. We're going to try to get a handle on the file cabinets and the boxes and all the stuff that's kind of accumulated there and 
Um, so I think this is a good time to do those types of um, projects. So. One last thing, I just wanted to say thank you to all the, the doctors and nurses and medical staff that are continuing to keep and treat those people and put themselves not only in danger, but their families as well. So, and our first responders as well. Absolutely. We, we all agree a second on that one. Okay, so any other comments or thoughts before we wrap up? Before uh, we adjourn, I just wondered if um, we wanted to uh, allow Izzy from the Amherst B to ask any questions just as she would at regular meetings. Yeah, um, we can, sure. we can yeah. close the meeting, but we can stay on, right? For um, that? Sure. Or should yeah, the meeting stay the open? Meeting. I'll, make a motion, so I'll make a motion to adjourn, and then we'll all stay on, and if Izzy has questions, we can sure. answer it. So. So I make a motion to adjourn, adjourn the village board meeting for April 27th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Izzy, you're on. I think I've all said things. Stay safe, stay well. Okay, you well, said ask something. It was a lot of